Hello everybody and welcome to the first video on Transformers the deck building game, specifically the War of Cybertron standalone expansion. And this is going to be part of the Viewer Verdict series, the third video in the series. Someone actually commented on one of them because the other two have been almost unanimously fours. Uh, what happens if they all are like that? I think this one might be the first one to split the room because there isn't a miniature in sight. It's not the first card game that's been on the channel, of course. There's been the Binding of Isaac Four Souls, uh, DC deck building game, but it is definitely more likely to be div divisive due to the lack of miniatures or you know setting up a, a battlefield and things like that. And it is a card game, it is. And it's a type of card game I'm not super used to playing a deck builder, but we're going to give it a go. And in this series, if you aren't familiar, watch the first video in the viewer verdict playlist. It's two minutes long. It explains in enough detail to go into specifics, but essentially watch the video and then take to the comment sections of the video and say whether you are for or against more of this game featuring on the channel regularly. Unless it's unanimously against, it won't disappear forever necessarily, but I'm going to listen to the audience. It's your chance to flex your, your criticism muscles or whatever about how much you think it fits the channel and how much you want to see more in the future. So we're going to go over how you actually play the game real quick. Obviously playing the solo variant uh, can be played competitively or cooperatively. I'm not going to be going into the specifics of those modes because that's not, not what's being played but enough for you to follow along just from watching. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. So you make a deck following the rulebook very closely. Here is the rulebook right here. And you don't use all the cards that come with the box and that's where the every game feels different aspect comes from. In fact, here's the pile of cards not being used. That is a lot of cards. So. When you're playing solo, you have three rows of four cards. If you're playing with more players, you will have a bigger play area. It's called the Matrix for the purposes of gameplay. So this is the Matrix. These are cards that will go into the Matrix. And if you're playing the solo variant, what your goal is, is to find a level one boss, a level two boss, and a level three boss that are hiding in this deck somewhere and defeat them. And if you manage to defeat all three, you win. There is a few lose conditions. If the Matrix fills up with ruins, which is a role specific to War and Cybertron because you're destroying the planet as you fight, uh, you lose. If you take five damage simultaneously, if you have five damage cards in your uh, hand, you lose. And, oh, there's a third fail condition. I'm forgetting what it is. Oh, if this deck runs out. If that deck runs out. That is the third fail condition. There might be others, but those are the three main ones. So this is where we'll be bouncing around. This is a standee for who we're playing as. I'll show you actual playing cards, etc. in a second. This damage pile is meant to be face down. I have it face up to remind me what it is. I'll be drawing from the bottom of the deck, but that's what damage cards look like. Then we have rune cards. We have encounter cards for when we're fighting people. We have a basic card called reinforcements that we can buy at any time for the power listed. I'll go over the anatomy of a card in a second. And then we have missions which are... I've, I've seen it suggested not to include missions. We're going to give it a go just because the official setup says to use them. But we'll we'll see how they go and if we do play more in the future maybe not bother with that particular aspect. It doesn't have much of an effect other than just a handicap in solo mode. So speaking of solo mode, this is what you start with. Uh, you pick a character, they start in their vehicle form. I'm playing as Optimus Prime. There is a few Autobots and Decepticons available in the box for you to play as, like Hot Rods, and I, I, I honestly forget which Decepticons are available. You pick three missions randomly if you're playing solo. You start with two Energon Cubes. You pick anywhere on the Matrix to start. You saw where I picked, which, by the way, from what I've been watching, is the space 90% of people start on for whatever reason, so I'm doing it too, because I, I don't know if there's a tactical advantage or not. You get a starting deck of 10 basic cards, you'll be drawing 5 of these a turn and the goal of a deck builder is not just to find those bosses because you need to be strong enough to kill them so you have to shop as it were for stronger cards including that generic pile where you can buy a set card from I'm going to lift one of those now and use that as a basic example of how they work so hopefully in focus here is an example of the reinforcements card it costs 2 power, not energon, 2 power to purchase one and put it into your discard pile which means you will be able to draw on future turns. That little lightning bolt is, is power. Cards generate power for you to spend on fighting, buying cards, that sort of thing. 
it has range on it, which means you can attack up to one card away. Usually you can only attack the card you're on. And it also provides one move, which is what you use to get around the board. But your vehicle form gives you some of that for free. Then it just tells you what you can use it for. It's got the block keyword, so it can be used to block things. You may convert, that means you can change form. And you can spend Energon to do things with the Energon cost listed. But we don't need to worry about that until we see specifics. So that is what cards basically look like. If we find Autobots, we can pay the power cost to recruit them into our deck. If we find generic Decepticons, we have to fight them and get rid of them. Uh, I forgot to show you the other side of the character card, but this is the vehicle form for Optimus Prime. It gives you two free movement to use at the start of a turn. It costs one Energon to convert into your robot form outside of any uh, card effects. But on his robot form, you get an ongoing power and you have a couple you can spend Energon on. And that's about it. And I, usually I thought, from my research, car forms usually have a negative when you're trying to fight someone as a car because it doesn't work as well, but maybe not in War for Cybertron. I don't see a negative listed there, so hopefully I'm not missing anything. Uh, speaking of which, obviously first time playing it, so do expect not to be perfect. Try and do it right, obviously, but expect little mistakes. And with that, I think we've covered it, so you just draw your... well, we're going to have to turn over our three missions first, but then we just draw our five cards and we're good to go. So, I randomised these before recording, but I have not looked at them, so let's see what our three missions are. So this is Samanzian Dawn, objective, oh no, if it says team we really do need one that's just solo, although it says it, it must be finishable solo because it has the solo keyword. Play three plus robots during a single battle, so that's when you're trying to fight someone on the Matrix. We'll try that, why not? Uh, if there's any active missions when you find bosses, it makes the bosses harder. Victory points don't matter in a solo game unless you're keeping track for bragging rights, I guess. Search and destroy. Flip an adversary face up and then defeat it in the same turn. So we find an enemy and kill it in the turn we find it. That's very possible. And clear the last clearable ruin in the Matrix. So that's clean up Cybertron as you go. That's a mechanic we'll cover as we play as well. So I'm going to move these out of camera sight. I'll try and keep track of them because they're not super necessary to see. Each turn you draw five cards, one, two, three, four, five, and that's my draw pile. I'll put the discarded cards above it. And you look at your cards, this is just, and again these are basic cards. So we have three bolds which all give one power each and do nothing else unless you pay energy on. We have a scout which has one movement and flight which means we're allowed to move diagonally because normally you can only move orthogonally. And we have a resupply which gives you energy on. So you play these cards into play and those give you the resources to spend. Some cards force you to play them, when usually when they're bad. So I'll show you where we are on the board, but in general, my hand I'm just going to leave here and then just kind of push them up as I spend them. You don't necessarily need to see them. I'll show any special ones as I play, but if I say I'm playing a bold card, you know I'm just doing it for the one power unless otherwise stated. Alright, turn one of the game. We start in vehicle form, which gives us two free move. I am going to immediately play, play that resupply card. If you have no energon, gain two, otherwise gain one. So I'm putting that into play basically just to gain a third energon cube. I forgot to open the little baggie of them. But that's fine, there we go. So I now have three energon. We have two free move. You need to use a move to explore a card you're on, or you could ignore it and just move elsewhere. I'm going to pay one to see what is right underneath us. And it is... An Electro Scrambler, which I'll try and have in focus. It's a little hard with the light there as well. It's a technology. You may attack, choose one option, target character within range, discard one card of their choice, or gain two damage if you choose to damage, discard this card. So that seems like it's more for adversarial, to be honest. You may attack, target character within range, discard one card of their choice, or gain two damage. Well, I'm going to play it that I can use that on Decepticons. I'm not 100% sure that is usable like that. It sounds more like it's for fighting someone who's playing the opposite side to you. Not that I can afford it right now anyway, because it costs 5, and the most power I can muster this turn is 3. So, no no need to worry about it yet. We still have one free movement from being in robot form. Let's just move over here. So that's all my free movement gone, but I'm going to play the flight card. Not bother taking advantage of the flight, I'm taking advantage of the move pointer it gives to flip this card. See what it is. It is an ally spy network. Start of the turn, peek at one card in the matrix, then you may flip it face up or leave it. If it's a scheme or a polity, we'll cover those when we find it, you must flip it up. 
ongoing. When you move on to a space occupied by an adversary character, you may peek at a player's hand. Well, the second part doesn't matter, but that is just a nice effect. It costs three power, and I have three power, so I'm going to buy that card. So I'm putting those three bolds that we saw, they each give one power, I'm putting them into play, and I'm buying this card. And I think allies just get put face up on the side because they're always in play. I'm going to go double check that. Uh, at the end of a turn, if there's no empty spaces in the matrix, you destroy the top card of the draw deck, unless it's a boss, uh, in which case you have to put it into play. And that's how the deck mills itself, even if you're not clearing spaces. There is a timer. Eventually you will run out of cards. Uh, or if there's empty spaces, like this, they come down and they fill it. So that is a new card. We don't get to see what it is. We've got to search it. But there is a new card there. And that's how a turn ends. You discard what you uh, spent. You discard your hand. You draw a new hand. Take a new turn. Going to quickly look up the ally card, though, and then be back. Yep, so page 18 of the rule book, uh, ally cards... When you buy or play an ally, it immediately goes into play in front of you where it will remain for the rest of the game, unless something destroys it, of course. So that means at the start of my turns, I can peek at a card on the matrix to see what it is. It doesn't even need to be adjacent to me, it just says pick one card and look at it. And then I can choose whether or not it stays face up or face down, unless it's a scheme or a polity. So this card is always in play, I'm keeping it out of line of sight along the bottom of my table here, just so I remember. Top of a new turn, there is only 5 cards in the draw deck because you start with 10, so it's the other ones we have. A patch up, bold, bold, artillery, and bold. So we have a lot of power this turn, and range. We have four, 5 power, 1 range, and 1 move if we play patch for that, because that is usually used to heal you. And we're in robot uh, vehicle form, so we have 2 moving from that. I'm going to take advantage though of that spy network. I want to look at what came out of the deck at the end of that turn. It is Barricade, and it's a Decepticon that we could fight, and it would take 5 power. Let me just double check, I can get to 5 power, but there is a chance he'll power up slightly. But we could do it. 3, 4, 5. Yeah, we can do it. I, mean, I can spend 1 energy to get plus 1 power, actually, on the artillery. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to flip that face up. I'm going to accept that and flip it face up. So, he gets a chance to ambush us, though, I think, even though... We did it via the spy network. I believe so. So when you flip an adversary up, they do uh, an ambush attack. So what does it say on him anyway? Uh, that's for if you're actually playing as him. No, nothing else. So he is just a robot to fight. If you fight him, you get the reward at the bottom of the card. Again, if I was playing as the Decepticons, I could pay the cost to recruit him. And then it'd be quite a powerful card because it gives two power at range two and two move. So he's good for that. Uh, did I show his card up close? I don't think I did. Apologies. It messes with the focus, but we'll try. I still don't think it's in focus. I'm just about, maybe? He's really struggling for some reason. Uh, hopefully that was close enough. If it wasn't, I'll try to get a better angle in the future. It really does look like it's struggling, doesn't it? I'll need to look at that, but hopefully you saw the gist of it. I'm going to read up on the encounters now to make sure I remember everything correctly. Uh, we already know how much power I'm playing because it's all the power I have, but he gets to do something to us first. Alright, I've got the rulebook page open. Let's just go through this one real slow since it's the very first one, and then we can go faster after that. When a robot, a Decepticon or Autobot, is flipped face up in a space where one or more adversary characters are present, yes, an ambush occurs. Draw an encounter card and resolve the ambush text at the top of the card. An ambush revealed in this manner is an attack against all characters in that space. Fair enough. And then we can go to how to battle, assuming this doesn't mean I lose power, because if I lose power, there's no point, because we can't. So, we resolve this. We are resolving an ambush card. And oh, it's trying to lock onto the rules up there, which is impressive, but not what I wanted to focus on. Let's, I don't know what's up with the camera this morning. But we drew out of control. Ambush. Lose 1 VP. If you have none, gain 1 damage instead. We don't do the boss reveal because Barricade is not a boss. I, I don't know why it's so... There we go. There was a setting on that shouldn't have been on. It should be better now. Either way. Uh, that's what he's doing. So we're taking 1 damage, which means we have to draw a damage card. We ignore anything related to boss encounters because it's not a boss. But we do take a damage card. I'm taking it from the bottom of the deck because they're face up. And we got an energy leak, which is a basic damage card. On your turn, 
play this card before any other cards in your hand. You lose one energy on if you have two or more. And again, and when gained, put this in your discard pile. You get five damage cards, you lose. So that's unfortunate, but he didn't do anything to buff his power. So I don't need to spend energy on. I can just spend bold, bold, artillery, and bold for a total of five. That is all five right there to destroy him. Now, because he's a Decepticon, I obviously can't recruit him. But he goes into your vault, and if you were playing like a versus game, it matters for the purposes of victory points and draw one card. I'm going to have to double check if draw one card means just draw one card into my hand or if it means draw one card instantly out into the matrix. Alright, as far as I can tell, it just means draw a card into your hand from your your pile, so I had to shuffle what I'd already used because there was none left. Also forgot in his truck form, I could have converted if I drove onto his space, but I was already on it, or draw one card when you move. Oh, it's when you move onto a face of adversary. I didn't move up onto him, so I guess it's still just draw one from defeating him. That means oh, <laughs> I managed to shuffle the artillery back into hand. Uh, I technically I wouldn't have been able to do that because that shouldn't have went into the discard pile until when the turn was over. So actually, let's just draw something else. Uh, well, I drew the damage, which was in the pile, because it was in the discard pile. So I drew the damage, which means it gets played and does nothing, because we have two energy on. Fantastic. So the only thing I have left in my hand is Patch, which I keep on calling Patch Up because of Crisis Protocol. You may return one damage controlled by your target character in your space or an adjacent space to the stack. So I think because it is in play, I can actually just use this to get rid of that damage. So I will do that and get rid of that damage. And that's my turn. I can't do anything else. The Matrix... Oh! The Matrix does not fill that space. This is the mechanic for this version. We fought here, which means a rune actually got put into play instead. It is a hazardous wreckage. And you can clean these up to get energy on. And if it fills up, we lose. On reveal, characters in this space must move to an adjacent space. And when you move onto this space during any player's turn, gain one damage. But if you pay three power, you clear the rune for three energy on. So that actually means, well one I got pushed off so let's go down here I guess. It also means at the end of the turn there's nowhere on the matrix to fill a card so the top card of this deck gets destroyed. And it would have been Alpha Trion which was an ally which probably would have been good but he is now gone and can't be put into our deck. Top of the next turn here is my hand. I'm going to play the resupply instantly to get one energy on. So that means I have one extra move plus the two I've got in vehicle form and three power to play with. Which is something. I'm going to make use of the ally to peek at a card once I look at this energy on. I'm going to peek at the one I'm on to see what it is. And what it is, is it's Ramjet. It's a Decepticon again. He's weak though. He's actually pretty weak. He's only power 3. I think I can take him. I'm going to put that face up and we're going to have a little fight. So that means that he gets to ambush us. Let's see what he does. Ruination! Attack. No adversaries can be battled by any player this turn. Oh, in that case, no, I will not be attacking him. He is invulnerable for the turn. At least he didn't do damage. Hmm, is there anything else I want to do then? Uh, oh, does he do anything else when he's revealed? No, that's just stuff if you own the card. Well, we still have movement. And let's move over here for one of Prime's set movement. And we'll pay the other one to reveal whatever this is. Alright, we found an Autobot. We found Ramhorn. Assist or confront plus one power. So if you use him to attack someone, he's actually worth three, which is really good. We'll pay two power to immediately recruit him into our hand. There's our two power we're paying. He doesn't go into our hand, he goes into our discard pile. But that does mean we now have a strong card for fighting, otherwise he's worth two. But that's fine. We still have one movement left from our scout card and one power. Um, I'll use the flight card to go here and then that's it that is it for my turn I think don't need to do anything else we're gonna have to go after Ramjet another time and that is gonna fill up with something right there so new turn I have a hand meant for murder we've got artillery and four bolts and I can attack at range one I can't remember if range works diagonally I think it doesn't I think it's orthogonally uh, I might be wrong about that but we have two free movement so I could absolutely go murder Ramjet and it would be pretty easy. First though, I'm going to use Spy Network to see what I'm standing on. I am standing on Omega Formation. It's a maneuver. Let me see this. 
It gives you flight, it's 2 power, 2 range, 2 movement. You may discard the next encounter card you draw this turn before resolving it. If you do, immediately draw and resolve another one. That seems like a really good card. You can also pay 2 energy on to play a second assist face up and resolve it. So I'm going to double check the wording on Maneuver. I may as well leave that one face up because that we can afford it, but I'm not sure if I want it yet or not. I couldn't say anything specific about maneuvers, so it, it seems like it is just a card you can buy. And technically, I could pay one energy on on a bold card to make buying a card cost one less, but I still wouldn't have enough left over to do anything with. So we're just going to spend the five needed. Two, three, four, five. Right there, that is five power put into play, which is immediately being spent on buying the maneuver card, and it's getting put into the discard pile. That seems very good. We want more cards to give us more power. That means I still have two movement left and one power. That's not really enough to do much of anything. But let's move down here to potentially go and get around you. I'm not moving on to him this turn because he gets to ambush attack us if I move on to him. And I can't kill him this turn. So we'll just leave that there. We didn't fight, so no ruin. Just a card goes into play from the deck right there. And that's it. Here is my hand for the new turn. It's going to be an exploring turn. We only have two power to play with and a total of five movement, although I'm going to play resupply to get its effects instantly anyway. Uh, you can still use the movement on it, it's just I'm putting it into play to gain one energy on. That takes us to five. There's actually larger cubes that come with the game to represent five, so you don't just have a bunch of small ones. There's the larger cube. So that represents that I have five now, haven't spent any. And we're just going to... We're going to pay that one movement on that starter card to, oh wait no, I can look at this first. I can use the Spy Network to look at it. Let's do that first. It's a Decepticon. It's Breakdown. Hmm. Do I want yet another Decepticon on the board? He's killable. You know I'm not going to flip that this turn. No. So I use the Spy Network for that. So I'll move over here for one of Prime's free movement. And I'll flip this card to see what came out. It's Air Raid, one of the um, aerial bots. He costs three. I can't get that this turn, can I? No, no I can't. That's unfortunate. But we can get him next turn. We'll put the flight card into play because it says... It, well, it gives you flight, but also you may flip a card in adjacent space face up. I want to know what's up here. Oh, reactor coolant failure. It's a cooperative scheme. So this is another thing you can add to co-op and solo games to make things difficult for you. Ongoing. If you move onto a site... And we haven't found any sites yet, but lose two energy on and gain one damage. To thwart, contribute three technology cards with different costs. There's only one technology card available currently, and I can't afford it. That is nasty. That is very nasty. So there is actually little icons to remind you about ongoing effects that come with the game, which is quite neat. Because I need that type of thing, <laughs> honestly. So we'll just bung a uh, ongoing onto there. That's scary. I don't think there's anything else I can do with my turn. I need to wait and buy Air Raid next turn, I think. Yeah. So that means we're ending the turn with nothing on the board fillable. So this card gets destroyed unless it's a boss. Oh, it's a boss. So he gets put into play. I'm going to have to read the rules for how he gets put into play via this method. But Thrust is going to be our first boss. And we'll have to check if it does its reveal attacks and whatnot. But there he is. Alright, so reading the section about the end of turn phase, when you're refilling the matrix, go to this step if there is no space. Uh, reveal the top card from the main deck and take appropriate action. If it isn't a boss, destroy it. It is a boss. If it is a boss, the active player, the one whose turn is ending, must choose and destroy any face-up card in the matrix that is not an adversary, scheme or polity. If there are none, then destroy any face-down card, no matter what type it is. Place the newly arrived boss face up in the now empty space and then resolve any reveal and ambush attacks per normal. So he gets a free hit on us, that's nasty. So I can't get rid of Ramjet. It has to be a face up card. It didn't say I couldn't get rid of Ruins, right? It didn't specify Ruins weren't a card I could get rid of. Uh, it doesn't specify Schemes either, but I don't think that's in, in the... Like something they... Oh no, it does say Scheme. Never mind. Adversaries, Schemes or Policies. So I can get rid of that Ruin then. So I will. So he's going to replace that rune. And it also means he's close enough to me that I can hopefully fight him. Although he's strength 6. Which does not bode well. Then we have to reveal... Oh, does he have a reveal effect? Yes. 
Discard one non-damage attack, then resolve an ambush. Well, my turn's over anyway, so that doesn't really matter. I'll just discard a bold, because I can't fight in this turn anyway. But, he gets to do something to us. So this time we read the boss attack. Uh, the boss reveal, sorry. Ambush hits all adversaries. Well, that does nothing then. So if we were actually trying to kill him, you draw a card again, and this is when you do the bottom part of the text. So if we had, say we had been attacking him there, we wouldn't have got assists, which is a co-op thing, so it wouldn't really have mattered. But he also gets stronger by three, which would have been insanely bad, because that would have meant he was nine. And I don't think I can even get to nine with the cards I'm on. But anyway, I'm going to discard these, draw a new hand. So here is the hand I drew. I can get up to four power this turn, so it's not going to be enough unfortunately. So we can't fight Thrust. I was just double checking because I knew there was a solo rule about uh, adversaries face up making, or uh, sorry, incomplete missions making the bosses harder. It's only the level 3 boss, i.e. the final boss that gets stronger for each incomplete mission you have. Um, so I don't think we've done any of those. We definitely haven't played three robots in a single turn. I think we did do the first one actually. I, I think I beat an enemy the turn I flipped them. I'm pretty sure I did, right? I think that's what we did to Barricade because I flipped them the Spy Network. So we actually did do one of the missions. I, again, it doesn't give you anything. It just means that the the boss, the final boss, won't be strong when we find him. So I think we did do that one. Either way, though, we can't fight him this turn. I shall put a, uh, the resupply in play to get one energon because the more energon we have, the more we can spend. You can also just flat spend energon to get plus one power when you're attacking things. We're playing Ramhorn and Bold to buy air raid and recruit him to our cause because we need all the help we can get quite frankly so he provides one power one range and two move you can spend a move to teleport to an adjacent space you can also pay two energon to cancel a boss attack which is the main thing I'm after that leaves us with a couple of move and one power that's not really something we can use we know that's a Decepticon down there we can use the movement but if I move on to him, I get ambushed. If I move up here, I lose to Energon and take damage. Uh, and I don't have the card that gives you flight. So I can't just go whoop and go diagonally. I think I'm just going to wait there. Oh, I can make use of the Spy Network to check a card. I might as well. What's up here? That is a technology that costs four. It gives two Energon. I'll leave that flipped up. That's good to know because we need these technologies to get rid of that coolant leak. Okay. I don't think there's anything else I can do this turn. Uh, no. No, I don't think there is. Next turn, I'm going to go take out Ranja, I think, because getting the three needed to remove him is pretty easy. The six needed to take care of Thrust is going to be a problem. Well, I say that, and then I draw a hand like this, where I've got artillery, got a few bolds, and then I also got the Omega Formation, which actually means two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus I can pay an Energon to get to eight, that might be worth just going after him now then, uh, because I also have range. I have Well, this gives range 2, but this gives range 1. I can attack Thrust from where I am. I'm going to need to then double check whether bosses still get a chance to counter you if you're attacking them from further away. I presume they do, but I'll need to double check just to be absolutely sure. So that's what we're doing. So we're putting everything into play, 4, 5, 6, 7. All that hand is put into play to give me 7. I'm paying 1 Energon on the confront, because I'm confronting the boss, on artillery, to give me plus one more. Is there anything else I can do? Uh, I don't think there's anything else worth spending on. That would just be cost on buying cards, and we're not doing an assist. Yep, so I just need to check whether or not he gets a chance to, to buff himself in some way first, because then we could maybe use the maneuver to stop him. Alright, I have found the relevant page about confronting or battling a boss. Move on to or within range of. I am within range of. A boss and resolve an ambush if applicable. No, he's already face up. Then carry out the steps in the following order. Play cards to generate power and activate any desired legal energon abilities. I've just done that. We've done that. Then declare your intent to battle along with your power total. This initiates a confrontation. Done. So in turn order, adversaries get to try and boost up the boss. That's if you're playing against somebody. They can spend assist cards to buff up the boss's power. We skip that. We're playing solo. Um, shuffle all ten encounter cards. I don't know why I want you to shuffle them. Like They're already shuffled, so what does it matter? Then draw the top card and resolve the confrontation text. If a card you control is destroyed during this step, you lose the power generated by that card. Then you would also add any assists from players who are helping you. 
then you resolve all teammate assists, yep. Players may activate any energy abilities or defensive assists. Okay, so let's do the step by step. We're up to the step where he's attacking. I'm not going to bother shuffling all the cards. Let's just draw a new one. So this is the boss confrontation. So it's the text on the bottom. Add X to the adversary's cost where X is the highest cost of a non-boss card currently in the matrix. So he would be getting three then. So that would be six, seven, eight, nine. That means I can't get there, right? Because that would be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would be a draw. I think you need, I don't know if equaling is good enough. I think you have to defeat. Let's keep reading on and find out. Resolve all teammate assists, even though this generates power beyond what you need to defeat the adversary. If you still need additional power, you may activate legal or unused Energon abilities. Okay. If your collective power total is equal to or greater, okay, then you've defeated it. So equal is enough. Good. Let me just double check then, because again, he's getting buffed up to nine because of Ramjet there. So artillery gives two, maneuver gives two, and then we've got three bold, so that's two, four, five. Wait, what, was I missing a card there? I feel like I didn't add that up right. Two, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, we got to eight. We got to eight with the bonus. I'm going to need to double check that you can throw in just a, an Energon cube for one power, because I absolutely would at the point where it said do any legal Energon, uh, which is after the step at which you know whether or not they buffed themselves or not. Let's double check that. No, it seems I was wrong. You can't just spend an uh, Energon cube to get plus one power. I must be misremembering, or it's just not in this version. It's in the, the older versions. But what I did miss was I knew there was a card text somewhere that was helpful. It was on the maneuver card where you may discard the next encounter card you draw then before res uh, before resolving it if you do immediately draw the next one I'm doing that because we have no chance of defeating him otherwise so we're going to test that out it could actually be worse um, destroy one maneuver you control if you control none gain two damage instead if blocked destroy the block card if any so we're outflanked I see uh, well, we only have one maneuver card, and we don't have anything with blocks, so that could be worse, because that means that card that I just used that on, that's out of the game, that's destroyed. How much power does that leave us with? Two, three, four, five, plus the plus one is six. So we actually do still equal him, but it came at the cost of that card getting destroyed. But it does mean that thrust is out of there. It would give VP. VP does not matter. Uh, in Seoul, at least, but it is one of the three bosses that needs to die. It cost us that card, though, but at least we got there. <laughs> his ability is what also cost him his life, but otherwise he wouldn't have died. So we're also down in Energon, and we're still where we are, because we attacked at range, but now we have to refill the Matrix, because my turn's over. I spent my entire hand, so something, whoops, something goes there, and something goes here. You never expand beyond the original size of the Matrix based on the number of players you were using. So just a little note there, I absolutely should have paid one Energon to convert Prime into robot form uh, because when he transforms into robot form he gets plus one power for each card you control that is cost three plus. I don't, that would have given him one extra power right there and he can spend one Energon to block an attack. So that would have been super helpful. As it is, he is still in vehicle form going forwards for now. Alright, my hand for this turn is six power with a couple of extra movement thrown in, including flight. So there's a few things we can do. I'm going to start by using that spy network. I want to know what I'm standing on. It is Slipstream. It is a quite powerful Decepticon. Let's uh, choose to not flip that one face up then. And we're going to move. We'll use one of Prime's movement to move here and one to flip this. It is Rust Worms. It's a scheme. Oh dear. Okay, so what does this one do? Ongoing. When you move on to a site or ruin, attack. Oh, sorry. This one. This should have become a ruin because we destroyed the boss. I'll put this back on the top of the deck. So unfortunately, we'll know it's coming. But I totally forgot it should have been a ruin because we killed a boss on it. So it's actually a pile of scrap. On reveal, characters get moved. Ongoing. Play pu P plus one move to move on to the space. P three or more to clear the rubble for two energon. So actually, that should be there. I haven't used any movement yet. I'll pay both movement to move on to here. And I think I will clear that rubble. Got to try and remember that. Uh, let's pay the artillery. No, let's pay... Yeah, we'll pay the artillery in a bold. I don't think we're going to be attacking anything else. We might. We could take out Ramjet, but... Pay those two. That's three power. And that means we clear that rune. And we get two energon for doing so. And it helps us not fill up the place with ruins, which means we won't lose. So, what else will we do? 
let's just try and take out Ramjet. We're going to use our other movement. We'll use flight, actually. Why not? So, let's do that. You may flip a card in adjacent space. No, we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to move down here. We resolve an ambush against us. Lose two Energon. That's rough. I could cancel that if I'd been in robot form, but I'll, use, I'll lose the two Energon, and we'll just play these two. Because it's a confrontation, this one is actually worth uh, three power. So we actually have enough just with him, but I'll pay both. And because he's not a boss, you don't do a new card. And Ramjet gets destroyed. And we draw a card. Not that that's going to matter, really. And this becomes a ruin. Oh, it becomes a toxic war zone. That's lovely. On reveal, characters in this space must move to an adjacent space and gain one damage. Ongoing characters cannot move or be moved by an effect onto this space during any player's turn. This ruin is not clearable by any effect. Well, doesn't that mean one of my missions is now un... Doable. <laughs> so I get pushed to an adjacent square. We'll go over here because we know that's a Decepticon. I take one damage, which is energy leak again, which we saw already. And I do need to draw a card, but I would just end my turn anyway, so I'll just shuffle, draw into hand, and then immediately discard because that's where I'm ending my turn. Uh, patch up, which I could actually, actually, well, <laughs> never mind. I can use patch to get rid of that damage. You may return one damage controlled by target character in your space or an adjacent space to the stack. Or you can pay one energon to destroy one starter you control. Oh, that's how you get rid of your basic cards, I see. Yeah, I'll just get rid of that damage card to remove it immediately. And that means the matrix does fill that up because it's not ruined anymore, and that's the turn. Here is my new hand after a slight break where some family stopped by unexpectedly to visit. Hope I remember what I was doing. We're going to play the resupply for one energon and one extra movement. We're going to use spy network though to see what we're sitting on. It's an Autobot Rewind. I'm not familiar with Rewind. We'll keep him face up obviously because we need all the help we can get. Oh, he's a block so we can block uh, attacks with him and he can peek at the top card of any deck. Interesting. You can also pay one energon to draw a card. So he costs three. We can get that can only get that just and then not do anything really sadly uh sure okay uh, no sorry he pays he costs two um yeah okay well we'll we'll buy him put him into play we need to start getting rid of our basic cards i know my deck builders we need to get rid of those bolts for because most of these are just bold but better because you get more than just one power so rewind goes into our discard pile he is now part of our crew that leaves us with two power and if i play air raid we get two movement as well um, I'm going to stay where I am, and I'm going to pay that too for a reinforcement card from the general deck. It's got nothing else but reinforcement cards in it. They all do the same thing. One power, one range, one move. They're block cards, and they let you transform. And you can pay one power for a command or assist for plus one power. Now, I think that's what Prime can do in robot form. So that goes into our discard as well. Quick turn. And then this gets refilled with something from the Matrix, because we need more power, because we barely beat that level one boss, which means the level two boss is just going to be worse. Oh yeah, one additional thing about the mission we had, I think I actually did do this one, because it says clear the last clearable rubble in the Matrix. When there was only one rune in the Matrix, I cleared it. So I believe I actually did this. Although at the end of a turn you can discard a mission and draw another one, because it would have been unattainable now thanks to that never being removed. So I'm counting it as being done, because I'm pretty sure I met the criteria earlier on. And here is our hand. We got just basic cards, as per usual. <laughs> Playing the resupply for Energon. We're going to use Spy Network to look at what we're on. It would be technology that costs 5, it gives 4 power. This card can only be used to battle, its power has the range of target cards you control with flight. Okay, that sounds really good actually, but we can't get to 5 this turn. That said, I will have it face up. We can get to 1, 2, 3. 3 only, huh? Well, we know it's there. Let's play flight and we're, we're not going to use it we're just going to move into the corner here it's just for the extra movement i think i still had plus one movement i, I absolutely did because the resupply gave energy as well so we we'll use one of that to flip this it's another maneuver overwhelming force it costs five for two power one range to uh, move plus one power for each robot or ally you control that is really useful for us because we've got a bunch of robots and one ally card so these are two cards I really want to buy. I can't this turn, so I'm going to spend two and buy another reinforcements card. Because we just need better stuff. 
and that's all going to go into the discard pile. We can't put anything in the matrix so the top card gets destroyed unless it's a boss. It's cloaking tech. It's a technology. It doesn't matter though, because it is gone. So we actually got a really good hand for battling, but I want that Gideon's glue. We're going to use one of Prime's set movement. Oh, actually, first of all, we're going to use Spy Network. I want to know what this is. Oh, it's a polity site. We have to flip that up, I believe it said. I'll double check in a second. In fact, let's double check now, because in solo mode, when you flip, open a, uh, flip over a polity site, the enemy automatically takes control of it. Uh, if it's a scheme or a polity, you must flip it face up. Yep. So what does this do? Ongoing. If this polity is under your faction's command, gain one energon when you first move onto the space per turn. You can pay three power, take command of it, or you play pay plus one for each additional you already control. So that starts under Decepticon control because we're playing solo mode. I have a little symbol for that. And we can't attack bosses while they have one under their control. So that does kind of influence what we're going to have to do this turn. Uh, we are definitely buying that card though. But I can do it by spending cards that also have movement on them. So we use one of Prime's free movement to move here. We have to pay five. So let's see. One, two. There's four. Five. Everything except the artillery card right there. There's five. And that also includes two movement. Three movement. So we're buying this technology. It can only be used for battling. Nothing else. But that's in our deck now and we still have all the movement in the world, we're going to go whoop, whoop and move on to this polity site here. And we need to pay three power. It does not count as a confront, so we can't do anything there. Let me just check Prime's robot form. Uh, no, take command. Oh, no, it says command or confront, actually. And cards in play count as being controlled, so that would be plus one power. Yeah, we can do it. I'll pay one Energon to transform into robot form, so that's gone. And that means we get his command or confront power. It also means we don't get free movement now, unless I transform back. Plus one power for each card you control. Cards in play are ones you control, as far as I can tell. So, the cost. So it's not even their power generation. Air Raid is a three cost, down there at the bottom of your screen. Which means we get plus one power when I play Artillery. And that means we take over the polity site here. By the way, polity is a word. <laughs> I didn't know it because I thought they meant policy. And I looked it up, but polity is just the word for like the house of governance or something like that. So it is a real word. So I learned something thanks to this game. So we did take control of that, meaning if I move on to it in a turn, I get free energy on. Not much, but at least that also means I can attack Decepticons. Speaking of which, that's the end of my turn. That fills up with something and that's it. So here is my new hand. I noticed on the patch card, if you want to destroy a damage card that's in your discard pile, it actually costs one Energon, so I'm discarding an Energon for what I did earlier, since it was in the discard pile when I got rid of it. So I'm correcting a mistake I did earlier. Other than that, we have two movement, three movement if I play patch actually, which I just did, so. Uh, we'll play patch, and that also means we can pay one more Energon to potentially destroy a starter card we control. If we leave it as is though, we have four power to play with, range one and three movement. Let's use the spy network to see what's top left of the table. I have to stretch over a little bit for that, apologies. It's a sneak attack maneuver. You may convert or teleport to any space or pay one energon to target a character within range. That seems more like a, a versus mode type thing. I'm going to leave that. Actually, again, no harm in leaving it face up, I suppose, because it's not doing anything to me. So we'll move one, two, and I believe we had three movement, right? I said that, yep. So we'll pay the third movement to turn this over, see what it is. It is a relic. What is a relic? Ongoing. P plus two move to move onto the space. You cannot activate energon abilities while on this space. P five power, range zero. Clear this rune, then place this card in your destroyed pile. And if you clear it, you gain six energon. So it's a special type of rune. It didn't say it displaced us, so we are just stuck there without having to pay the extra, but five energy, can't do you five energy this turn. Nope, we could get, oh, we could get to four, that's annoying. And it's not a, it's not a command or a confront, so we can't do anything else, because it's a clear. So unfortunately, yep, nothing else I can do. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Uh, the matrix is full, top card gets destroyed, unless it's a boss. Armor playing, that sounds like it would have been real useful. Oh well, it's gone. 
Here's the new hand, and unfortunately Gideon's glue can only be used for fighting, so we can't play that to easily destroy this rune. So, I'm going to just have to abandon it. I'm going to use the spy network to check what this is. Oh, wait, we knew what that is. That's the rust worms. I'm going to check what this is. We knew what that was as well. <laughs> we know what that is too. Is that literally the only card we don't know? That's Decepticon. No, rust worm, Decepticon, Decepticon. What is this then? It's Praxis, it's a polity, so we have to leave it flipped up. I have to start clearing stuff. Start of a turn, if this polity is under your faction's control, you can draw an extra card. That's really good. That's really good. So it would cost me four to take control of it, because I already own one. The Decepticons take control of this immediately, though. So that is theirs, right there. Okay, so if I want to move back onto this site I'm on, it's going to cost me two extra movement. That's something I'm just going to have to deal with later. We're going to get a total of two movement by putting these two cards into play, as well as one Energon for the resupply. And we're going to move two and go whoop, whoop. How much power do we have in play currently? Two, three, four. It's P3 power plus one for each one, so it would be four power. Yeah, okay. That gets, without spending the glue, that gets us there. So we'll convert this. Do, 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 do. Which means I draw five cards, uh, sorry, six cards at the top of every turn instead then. Uh, we're just going to discard Gideon's glue for the turn. The matrix is full, unfortunately. Top card destroyed unless it's a boss. Oh, would have been, oh, look at that. Omega Supreme. Well, he's dead now. So I could draw everything I had left, which is a lot of fighting. How much damage can we get up to? Two, three, four, five, six if I spend seven. That's more than enough to take out a Decepticon. Uh, we could also... Oh, I can't clear Toxic toxic Rune. So I forgot about that. Um, oh, how much movement do we have? That would give me one, two, three, plus flight. Okay, so we can get up to three movement. I'm putting this entire hand into play. So we have three movement and a bunch of power. Uh, I'm going to use Spy Network to flip over whichever one of these was the weaker. Actually, maybe I should go for the stronger. Because we could block his attack. Yeah, I'll go after Slipstream. Go after the stronger one. Why not? So, we'll move. And we can move diagonally because I gave myself flight. So, doop, doop. Spy Network flipped him over. Because we landed on him, though, I think he still gets the chance to attack us. So, we'll draw that. Lose two Energon. The Cost of War. Okay, so that means that's down to three. So, and in total, we have four. And now we're just going to battle him and destroy him to get him off the table. So, we have, again, we have play, uh, played more than enough. I don't need to spend the energy on our, our artillery because he's only four. So, he is removed. Goes into my scoring vault and a ruin takes its place. Hazardous wreckage. Characters in the space must move to an adjacent space. When you move onto this space during your turn, deal one damage to yourself. Pay three to remove it. Getting a little full with the old ruins. I'm going to push myself down to where we know the other Decepticon is. And that is my turn. Oh wait, no, it's not my turn. Well, it is, but the Matrix is full. Something has to get destroyed. Uh, it's a polity. That, that, it says only a boss doesn't get destroyed, so a bog standard polity goes away. I'll double check actually, because that's a tier 2 polity. That seems important. Yep, it says if it's not a boss, it gets destroyed. So that polity is gone. There is my hand. Lots to potentially do here. We know we're on a Decepticon. And we can get up to what power? One, two, three, four, five, plus spend some energy on to get even more. Uh, Prime's ability kicks in, so air raid would be plus one power as well, because he's cost three plus. So I'm comfortable destroying this or uh, Decepticon rather. So we'll use Spy Network to flip it over. It's breakdown, he gets to attack us in an ambush. Gain one damage. Ow. So we'll gain one damage. It's another energy leak. I swear there is a second damage type that is an energy leak, but we're not seeing it right now. So we need three power to take him out. We're playing air raid. He's worth one, but because of Prime's ability, he's actually worth two. And we'll play rewind, who's worth another one. That also means we have three movement to play with, plus flight. Oh, actually, he has block on him. Although I think that might use up the card. Does that use up the card? Block is on page 11. Let's quickly check live. Because if he's got block, I already put him to play before attacking him. Some cards with block have additional text, such as block game one energy. Nope. An attack can be avoided by discarding a card from your... Ah, oh, yeah, you have to discard it. I'll take the damage because we have patch up to get rid of it. 
So that's fine. That destroys him. He goes. Another Decepticon down. Another Rune on the board. Pile of scrap. Characters in this space must move to an adjacent space. P1, uh, plus one move to move on to this space. P3 to clear it. Yeah, I need to start clearing the wreckage or we're going to lose. <laughs> Unfortunately. Because a lot of the place is becoming wreckage. So we have a damage card in our discard pile. Because it says when gained, put in your discard, right? On your turn, uh, when gained, put in your discard pile. So if I want it removed from my discard pile, which I do, we'll play patch, and it costs one energon to do it that way. To once again just get rid of damage immediately as I've gained it. I'm keeping control of that pretty well, it's just the runes I'm not. We have three unspent power and a lot of unspent move. Uh, let's say I got pushed onto here. That would use up two movement because it's also a rune, but that's fine because we had three. And I'll pay the three to clear it out with the rest of my cards. They each have plus one power. So that clears this rune. And once cleared, you gain three Energon. So that puts me from five, uh, sorry, from three to six Energon. There we go. And that means there's a space on the matrix. My turn's over, so it fills with whatever that is. And we're probably going to check that one because I need to find these bosses now. So we drew a good killing hand. Uh, keep in mind that we're getting one extra card because of that Praxis polity we control. Only one bot, but it really doesn't matter. Because if we, if we are going to fight someone, we get four from that. And we have the resupply. Play, pay the resupply, it gives us one move and one energon. We'll use the spy network to flip that new card, see what it is. It's a smelting pool site. You may buy one card from any destroyed pile. Wow. P2 power, it's a site to get rid of, to put it in your vault or discard. If you destroy one from your vault, gain one VP and three energon. Let's flip that face up. So you may buy one card from a destroyed pile. Let me look what's in the destroyed pile. What is there that I could want? That armor plating or possibly Alpha Trion? Nah, he just makes polities if you're standing on them better. I think armor plating is probably a good idea. It only costs three. So you may buy one card from your destroyed pile. How much power can I get up to not including combat because we're not fighting? One, two, three. Four, five. Yep, putting all five power into play to spend three of it on buying armor plating from the discard pile, uh, from the destroyed pile, sorry, into my discard pile. That still means we're one shy. Oh, wait, no, you only need to pay two power to get rid of this, so we can also get rid of it. I'll put it in my vault. And I'm not willing to destroy something in my vault, so we're not getting the extra energy on, but I'm removing a site. So that's good enough for me. Sure. Oh, actually, it's not It's not a rune, so it's not as bad. I was thinking it was a rune, but a site that does that kind of thing is basically a rune. And that's my turn, because the only thing I have in my hand is Gideon's glue. So we'll repopulate the matrix. New turn. Well, here's my new hand. I, I just remembered why the site keyword was important, as and also polities count as sites, which is unfortunate. I forgot that the co-op scheme up here... If you walk onto a site, you lose two energon and gain one damage. So each of those polities I walked on was a site, plus the smelting pool I just walked onto was a site. So that basically means I should have lost a total of six energon. So I'm removing that now. That's six energon, leaving us with one singular energon. And I should have been taking damage. Now, I've been healing the damage cards I've been getting, but that still means I should have three that I didn't heal yet. So we're actually very close to death. And I'll just draw them. It actually is all three of the other type of cards. We finally got to see it's three blast wounds. When you gain it, put it into play. Your assists have minus one power for every two damage you control. Doesn't matter in a solo game. So they just get put into play. They don't get discarded straight away. But it doesn't really matter again since it's uh, solo. So I'm just putting them in the discard pile. So we do have a lot of fighting that we can do. Let's check what that new card is that came out of the thing. It's a cooperative scheme. Start of turn, discard one card. To thwart, defeat the highest cost adversary robot in the Matrix without assists, and then contribute that card from your vault during the same turn. I don't know what that second part means, but in solo that just means, well, we lose a card, so we're back to drawing five, essentially, because of that card. There is no adversaries left on the board currently. I need to go clear. All right, well, let's put our entire hand into play. That gives us... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage, and two movement with flight. 
and we will go to movement with flight, so we can go diagonally. Uh, I could go up here and buy that, actually. Yeah, let's do that. We'll go up here, we'll buy this. We gain two energy for buying it, and it becomes a pretty okay card because it provides two power. So that's two energy on back in the pool. That cost four to buy. So that's that gone. That still leaves us with four more, but not enough move to go in and clear this. So we'll just have to leave that and populate with a new card like that and hope that it's not a sight because we're, we're now worried about the damage we have. And here's my new hand. I drew the sixth card and then immediately discarded it because of that ongoing scheme. It was air raid for the record. So as it is, we have one, two, three, four, five energy, two movement and range two. So the two movement, it costs plus two move to get into there, doesn't it? So we'll pay one to transform back into vehicular form so that we have two movement extra. We'll spend all that to go onto here and then play our entire hand to clear this rune, then place this card in the destroyed pile. And then if we clear it, you get six energy on. So I get a massive refund and that gives us enough to transform back anyway. And that basically gives us back what we lost for damage I should have been keeping track of. Super quick turn, but hey, we're milling this deck. It can't be long until we find the second tier boss because when you make this deck, the level 1 boss is in like the first 12 cards and then the level 2 boss is in the next 12, etc, etc. Okay, it works like that. Alright, here's my hand and again we've got that Gideon's Glue so we can actually get up to a pretty decent damage amount. Uh, but there's no damage card in our discard pile currently. You may return one damage controlled by the target character. Yeah, to control it would have to be in my hand, in play or in discard. In your deck in general doesn't count. Um, yeah, so... I can't do that. Spy Network, I want to know what just came out of the deck. Iron Fist. Okay, I'm not familiar with Iron Fist, I'm familiar with Iron Hide. He is 2 power range 1 and he costs 2. That sounds good to me. I'm also going to put Resupply in play. Uh, we're also going to turn back into Robot Form because we're at the point where we just want to fight a lot. So I'm going to transform back into Robot Form. That starter gives us 1 energy on back anyway. And it gives us one movement. I'm paying... Oh wait, he costs three. No, he costs two. He costs two. Yeah, I can play bold and rewind to pay that. The other cards don't really matter. So he goes into our discard pile. And that is my turn. We're going thick and fast now because I'm just I'm trying to find the bosses because we're running out of space. We know we don't want that. I can't remember what that is. I don't know if we flipped that one or not, actually. And we'll need to see. So of course the turn later we do draw one of the Blast Wounds, it goes into play, it doesn't do anything because we're just playing solo. But we can get up to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 if we spend Energon. Let's use Spy Network to see what came out. It is another maneuver, it's exactly the same. Well, that's fine I guess. Uh, it costs 4 to buy. Yeah, we'll, we'll buy one of those for 4, why not? We're making our deck better, if nothing else. So, there we go. That is a good card to have. We still have one potential move with flight and range one, two damage, or three damage if I spend. Uh, we'll just stay where we are. I just I want to flip the cards as they come out, basically. Yeah, that'll be it. So, this card comes out right over here, and that's it. Alright, we can get up to five damage this turn. We have a total of three movement, four movement with flight. But, again, we're just going to spy network to see what this is. It is the level 2 boss. He has to be flipped up. It is Octane, and he does his reveal and his ambush. I'm going to have to come around this side of the camera now. Discard one block. If you have none, gain one damage. This attack cannot be blocked. I think I do have a block card. Yes, the reinforcement cards count. Uh, how much power does he have? Eight. Good grief. Well, we ain't killing him this turn anyway, so I'll discard this. It has block. So that saves us from the sneak attack damage. Start of turn, gain one damage ongoing. You cannot confront Octane if any other Autobots are in this space. Well, there isn't any other Autobots. Start of turn, I gain one damage. That may mean we're just going to die then. Because we have, what, three damage? So we can take two more, which is not good. Uh, Alright, well, he has to do a reveal attack against us as well. Ambush hits all adversaries. Doesn't do anything to us when we're playing solo, that's fine. Um, 
I will pay two to get another reinforcements in the deck, but that's that's all. That's it for the turn, and we destroy the well. Grab that reinforcement card first. Destroy the top card of the deck. It would have been a maneuver, five-fold maneuver. Didn't have any power on it, so I'm not that fussed about that one. All right, here is my hand. I'm not sure what we can do with it, but as per Octane's rule, we gain damage. So there's a blast wound. Uh, again, for solos, just counts as us taking damage, which I think means we're one away from death. How much damage can we get to? He's an eight. So from auxiliary power, we've got two. Armor plating is two. Uh, so that'll be four. Iron Fist is another two, so that's six. You can pay two Energon. Each character within range gains two damage. Adversaries don't count like that. I'm pretty sure that's for adversarial mode only, so that's six. Starter card, that would be seven. Reinforcements, that takes us to eight on the dot. We can pay one on reinforcements for plus one power for command, because it doesn't say it affects command, no. So that would take us to nine. And then Prime's innate power means armor plating is actually worth three, so that puts us to ten. So that gives us a grace of two. Is that good enough? I can also actually pay um, one Energon on Prime to block an attack. So I think we're going to go for that and playing that entire hand. It gives us ten power at the cost of. Uh, one, no, two additional Energon, sorry. So that's ten, but Octane gets a chance to do something to us. Destroy one technology you control. If you control none, gain two damage instead. If blocked, destroy the blocked card, if any. I do dis uh, I do have technology, but does it mean in my hand? Oh, you know, oh, I played one. So yes, destroy one technology you control. So that means those two disappear. Oh, I would have gained two energy on loaf just for playing it, so get, I do take that first. So that gets destroyed, and destroyed means removed. But we were over by two, and that means it comes back down by two, so that means we have eight on the dot. Let me just double check all that. Two, three because of prime, four, five, six, seven, paid another one for eight. Yes, we got eight on the dot. Hopefully that was done correctly, and that does mean that Octane is out of there and we just have one boss left to find he makes you gain 4 BP which again doesn't matter it doesn't mean if we take one more damage from any source though we're gonna die <laughs> unless we start repairing it which is a big deal uh, hopefully we will but oh and one with that done oh with that done though this gets destroyed because a ruin's gonna be there so that oh the Decepticon capital got destroyed and hazardous wreckage we've seen that already it's another one of the same one we get pushed to an adjacent thing. Let's get pushed over here, because we might end up buying that, because that card seems pretty good. Well, not a super great hand as we draw two, the other two, damage that we had. So those are doing nothing for us, and nor did we get our heal. What have we got to play with here? We'll put all these into play. We have two movement with flight, four power, range two. Uh, we'll just buy the maneuver card we're on. Yeah, that's all we can do. So we'll just, we'll buy this for the four. Wait. Did we get up to four? Yes, we did get up to four. We'll buy another maneuver card in the hopes that we live. Matrix refills at the end of the turn. We desperately need to draw that repair card. I can't remember if it's in the discard already or not. We need to draw it so we can heal one of these wounds. Well, here's our hand. We do have killing power, but I worry about revealing an enemy and having them attack us. That said, we'll use Spy Network to see what this is. The Rise, it's another scheme. And I really should have handled these. Reveal all players, destroy all missions in your vault, then draw one new mission. No, oh, well, there goes the two I actually did. Ongoing bosses cost one more power to defeat for each mission you control. To thwart, contribute X missions from your vault where X equals the number of players. So I only need to do one additional mission. And then it's fine, but the two missions I've done and get discarded. Thanks for that. And draw, it was draw one new one, right? Reveal one new one, yeah. Doom Patrol, I know those guys. Flip two plus cards face up in a single turn. If you reveal an adversary, you complete the mission. That's going to kill me. This is going to get me killed. I still have the other one in play for playing three bots in a turn. It's very possible at some point I've done that and just not noticed. But I didn't notice, so I haven't I haven't done it. Arg! Well, I can't thwart that this turn, and that makes enemies one harder. No, only bosses, right? Yeah, only bosses, which is something. How much movement am I getting out of these cards? One, one. 
E, one, huh? Well, in that case, I will move here to this polity I control. And, no, oh, no, I can't, because it's a site. If I start my turn on a site, I die. I can't do that, because of the, the scheme and the coolant failure. We have flight, though, thanks to rewind. No, we don't. He has block. Arg! I can't move without transforming. So we'll pay one energy on then to transform to truck form, which means in total we have three movement this time. So it costs two to go here. And then I'll pay the three power to clear it. Hang on. Ongoing when you move onto the space during any player's turn, gain one damage. Nope, never mind. I can't do that. I have to be able to move diagonally or I can't leave because I'll die. <laughs> and we don't have flight this turn because Rewind is a cassette, he's not an aerial bot. I have to just end my turn. I have to. Because I can't leave my space unless I have flight. That is frustrating. I'll stay in uh, truck form though so we have more movement to play with. This gets destroyed. Unless it's a boss. It was another good maneuver card. Oh well. Well this is very unfortunate because I did draw the patch up card but I had to shuffle the, the deck to draw from. Um, so we also don't have flight. Play that for one Energon and then immediately pay that one Energon to destroy a starter card and we're going to destroy this bold to get rid of that to clear out some basic cards from the deck a little bit. Unfortunately I can't do anything else so this gets destroyed. Oh that looks like it would be important, the key to Vector Sigma. Well it's gone. I think this is the beginning of the end. Well we drew no movement, uh, no flight again Blastwind just goes into play. Is there anything I can do with this turn at all? I mean, yeah, I could buy another reinforcements card. They all have block on them, so I might as well. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll spend two of that, all that power, to buy yet another reinforcements card. But that's the turn, and destroyed unless it's the boss. Armor plating, goodbye. Well, an absolutely awful hand because we've got three blast wounds, but. We have a total of four movement with flight because we're in vehicle form. So at least I can get out the corner. I'm going to use Spy Network to double check where this is. I can't remember if we know what it is or not. Oh, it's a casual Megatron. Let's not because he'd murder us. <laughs> he's actually not a boss. He's just an adversary because he's one of the playable characters. So that leaves us with uh, the four movement plus flight, like I said. And what do we have to spend? We have three that we can spend. Well, we can move diagonally, so let's go there for one. And... Uh, let's see. It only costs plus one move to get into that rune, so it doesn't damage you. So we can get in there and remove it. We still have two movement left. Well, hang on though, that was one. We have three movement left, we had four. Let's move here for two. And then three, four. It means we can't clear it this turn. Because I can't pay the three. Oh wait, no, sorry, I can. Artillery gives you two. Yeah, we'll pay the three to remove this rune. It gives us two energon, and more importantly, gives us another space to play with. So, a couple more energon. Ender turn, obviously. At least this card doesn't get destroyed, unless, of course, it's the boss who will probably kill me when we draw him. Oh, speaking of which, I need to shuffle the encounter deck. We actually got a reasonably good attack hand. Will it be used for anything? I don't know. Let's. Spy Network this to have a little peek. The Sword of Primus. Wow, this card can only be used to battle. If you battle a robot, you cannot vault this card this turn. That means put it in your vault for victory points, which doesn't matter. Solo. If you battle a boss, you must vault this card after the battle. Uh, we'll leave that face up. It costs 8 to buy, though. I don't think we can, even with this hand we can get to 8. 1. I uh, can't use Gideon's glue because it's not fighting. Nope, we can't get anywhere close. We can get to half of it, actually. 4. Not good enough. We can only get to four. How do we get rid of that thwart above us? Defeat the highest cost adversary robot in the Matrix without any assists. The only one on there is Megatron, and I think he was a nine. So <laughs> that ain't happening. Um. <sighs> hmm, hmm, hmm. We are out of options, really. We're in. Oh, we're still in truck form, so I can still move. That was a free flip. I know this is that Worms card. I just want to remind myself what it said. Do we know what it is? When you move on to a site or ruin, destroy the top card of your deck. To thwart, contribute three block cards or two in solo. I think I can do that. Nope, I've got one block card in hand. I do have more than one block. 
but we can't get rid of it right now. Uh, we're just going to stay where we are, and in turn, I'm going to discard my whole hand. Something gets destroyed. Deep cover. Actually, do normal. I, I need to check if normal Decepticons get played. I'm pretty sure it has to be a. No, it's only if it's a boss. So that's good that he isn't there, honestly. There is our new hand, and we actually do have enough to do the the worms there. So we'll use Spy Network to flip it face up. We'll move on to it because we're in truck form. Contribute two block cards in solo from your oh from your discard pile. I could have done that last turn. I definitely had because I just shuffled it. So we definitely had two block cards in my hand last turn. Um, can't go back now because I've, I've I've shuffled the deck. So I'll just say I paid the two right now. But I, I yeah they were absolutely in my discard pile last turn. But that thwarts it. So that scheme is gone. It means we actually have a space on the Matrix to hopefully populate with new things. Um, there isn't really anything else I can do in my turn. Actually, I'm going to pay one to convert into robot form because I worry about an attack coming my way soon. So let's just convert because we're basically surrounded by death anyway. End of turn, we're running out of cards. So even if we don't find a boss that kills us, we'll just run out of time. Uh, the sixth card that I drew this turn and had to discard thanks to that co-op scheme there was a damage card. So I would have loved to draw that heal. It's still drawable, it's still in the deck. So there's still a chance. Um, what can we get up to here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Because Prime's ability won't kick in. We get up to eight. Spy Network, what is this? First Strike, it's a maneuver card. We'll keep it face up. If the polity in your space is not under any faction's command, plus three power, wow. Uh, we'll pay three to buy that, for sure. Seems like a good card. Put it in the discard pile. What else can I do? That costs three, so that's those three. Uh, we have two, we have three movement and two left. Probably not going to be able to buy this, but I'm going to move here in the hopes that maybe we can buy it next turn because it's a good card. End of turn, that goes on there. How many cards are left? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six turns left to ha make something happen. No good. Another fairly decent attack hand. Didn't draw the heal. Didn't get discarded either. Spy Network, what is this? It's our level 3 boss. It ends here. It's Shockwave and you need a 10? Reveal attack. Discard your hand, then redraw, redraw an equal amount of cards, minus 1, then resolve an ambush. Goodbye, nice hand that I really liked. So we would normally be drawing 6, but now we draw 5. Because of the polity, I mean. It's not start of turn, though. Oh, so we would draw four, sorry, because of him. So, we drew one damage. We did draw the patch up. So, oh, but we have to do is reveal attack. Do I have anything that blocks a reveal? No, so he's probably about to kill us. Ambush hits all adversaries. Actually, I wonder in that instance, you, do you do the bit above? Probably, because otherwise that makes no sense, right? So I've been doing that wrong. Lose one VP, if you have none, discard one card instead. Still means we live. Uh, I'll discard the Blast Wound into discard pile and then immediately remove it by playing this for one Energon and get rid of it. So it means we're two away from death. So there's that. And what is this ongoing? When a space in the Matrix becomes empty, lose one Energon. If you have no Energon, gain damage instead. Oh boy. There isn't anything I can do this turn, so we'll just end the turn. Card gets destroyed. Oh, Photonic Crystal Relic. Gone. Well, here's what we gained. We definitely ain't killing Shockwave this turn. I can't believe the only other option on the table was Megatron under there. So, we have options though. Well, first of all, we drew a Blast Wound, so that just gets played. That's a waste. So, whatever. We have two movement, but if I play those maneuver cards, I can teleport to any space. I'll also play this just to get one energy on, because why not? So, we're putting all of them into play anyway, because why not? Oh, actually, no, we need to get to eight. If we can get that sword plus the glue is enough to kill Shockwave. On its own, like, plus a few cards, got him easy. So, I'm playing those maneuvers, I mean, it doesn't matter, because this is all we're doing to teleport here in the hopes that next turn I can buy this, I can get to 8 somehow to buy it and then get up there and try and kill him before we run out of time. Such as it is, 
Car gets destroyed. Flame War. Not a Decepticon I know, but we're never going to meet them this time. Well, sadly, it's really just coming down to the luck of the draw, and this hand isn't good enough to take on Shockwave or take the sword. We did get a patch up though, and in my discard pile, I'm pretty sure there is uh, one damage. Let me just double check. We got rid of one. I'm pretty sure there's another one. There is. So I'm going to pay one Energon to get rid of another damage card, and that means we're not going to die. It does mean, though, that we're going to time out. Shockwave's thing isn't kicking in because there's no spaces in the Matrix. So that's my turn. Um, how many have we got left after this? This gets destroyed, first of all. Blue Streak and Autobot, you would have been real useful. How many turns we got? We have three turns to buy Sword, get there, kill him. Ugh. Um, we might as well just play on because I think this is going to be real quick. I accidentally just dropped half my deck, so pardon me. There we go. It's now technically been reshuffled, which you're not supposed to do. But three, four, five, and then the sixth card gets discarded because of the polity. Plus that, <laughs> we have. Oh, we actually have a pretty good. Well, uh, no, it was looking good. It was looking good, and then I drew a, a damage card. What can we get to? If we're confronting a target, this becomes strength three. So that'd be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because it's a three cost. But that's only in a confront, not buying a relic. And that's one. So if we're not fighting, can we get to eight at least? Four, five, six, I don't believe it, we can get to seven. Oh wait, if I pay one Energon, <clears throat> pay one less, mm, what's happening to my voice? Pay one less power the next time you buy a card in the space this turn. I'll pay the one Energon, which means that it costs seven, and I can buy it for exactly seven. It goes into the discard pile, and do I have in, did I have any movement in those cards? Hang on. Uh, yes, I had one on the maneuver. Exactly one movement. I'm going to move here, and that's my turn. We have two turns left. I need to mill my own deck. How many cards are we drawing? Hang on. One, two, three, four, five. And then the sixth card gets discarded. <clears throat> ah, we got the glue this turn. In here somewhere is the perfect turn to kill yeah, Shockwave, but it's not this turn. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it only robots? No, cards. Oh, Prime's passive is cards. Glue costs more than three, or three plus, I should say, so hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can actually get to 11 this turn. Hang on a second. There's actually a chance. Also, well, I'm putting this whole hand into play, first of all, but rewind. I can pay one Energon to draw a card. I'm doing that. What do we get? Artillery. I think we can do it, as long as he doesn't do the three damage to us. So, and we're confronting. So, plus one power. I'm spending an Energon on that as well. Alright, so we have range one, so I can attack Shockwave from where I am. He gets to attack us first, which is the bad part, but let's count this up. Every card that's three plus, Prime's passive makes it plus one power. And we paid the extra there. So that's actually three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That is fourteen we're attacking him with at range one. Does he take us out first? Add one to the adversary's cost for each Energon you control. If this is two or fewer, also gain two damage. We have four, which makes him 14. Did I just say, did we still lose there? That makes him 14, I think. Hang on. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We equaled him, and equal is good enough. We actually did defeat him, <laughs> amazingly. And that was the level 3 boss. So at the last possible, well, not quite the last possible second, there was two cards left. It was two Autobots, which would have been fantastic help. Where were you? We actually managed to do it by the skin of our teeth. Oh, that took a lot longer than I thought it would for a little card game. I'm losing my voice from talking so frequently, but that was fun. That was War for Cybertron, the standalone expansion to the Transformers deck building game. Um, I probably did some stuff wrong, but... 
winning by the skin of our teeth like that was amazing. We didn't even need that sword in the end, but that was in the, the running. Uh, I did totally forget, though, that we technically had new missions because we had to draw them as part of the, um, the co-op scheme, which means we technically should have lost if they were still in play. This one wouldn't have been in play, because even if just that turn there, I paid, uh, played three robots, so that would have been scored, so that wouldn't have been in play, but the the other one would have been. Because I definitely didn't flip two cards in a single turn after gaining this, which means Shockwave should have been 15, not 14. Now that does also assume I was keeping track of my Energon correctly, and I had four left. I definitely paid one for um, for the... What was it? I paid one to draw a card, and I'm pretty sure I had five left at that point on Rewind, his card ability. Oh, oh no, then I paid one more on Artillery to give it plus one power during a confront, so I had three. So actually, we would have had 15. So it would have been a draw still, and it would have been equal, so he still would have died. Never mind. Even though we still had one mission in play, we still won. So, I enjoyed that, even though it took a lot longer than I thought, but what I think doesn't matter for a viewer's verdict series, and I think I'm throwing this one in early as a kind of curveball, because the last two have been very positive. I'm curious how people feel about deck building games on the channel. It's not something I usually do. This channel is mostly focused on miniature games, of course, skirmish or board game. But usually there's miniatures involved. This is purely cards and standees. So take to the comments now and say whether or not you are for or against seeing more of the game on the channel. We can play as other characters. The decks will be entirely different because you set them up again. The missions will be different. I'm not sure I would include the missions again, really. They just seemed like a pointless hindrance. Schemes I quite liked because they, they totally threw me off. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think, and if you uh, want to see more, it will, it will be provided. Thank you for watching this one though and giving it a chance if you did. Please do remember to show your support, and if you want to go above and beyond, please do consider becoming a channel member. There is timed exclusive videos for channel members, you get a little icon next to your name, and some other perks, so you see my community posts that are for members only, and that sort of thing. Enjoy the rest of your day though, and see you in the future. Ta-ta for now.